Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to General Admission Sports. This is a video I wanted to do about some breaking news right now. It is about 3 in the morning while I'm recording this, but this is something that I need to talk about for all of us soccer fans out there because I think this particular story is going to have grievous implications moving forward for the state of soccer in Europe overall. Um, so I know that a lot of our videos, almost all of our videos for the last two months have been, you know, NCAA 2K20, uh, which if you like that series, we appreciate you keep watching that. Uh, we'll keep pumping those out. But I love talking about sports news and with everything going on, there just hasn't been a lot of it. But this is a big piece of news that I really, really think that I need to get out there. Um, so if you're not familiar with this story, uh, I think it was a year ago now, maybe Manchester City a soccer club over in England were handed a two-year Champions League ban for violating financial fair play. And we'll get into the specifics of what financial fair play actually is if you're not familiar. Um, but it's a law essentially kind of designed to help alleviate the problem of too much money in soccer. Um, it hasn't really been doing that. We're going to talk about that. And City violating that was a huge deal because... Getting that to your Champions League ban, City is a team that is routinely, at this point, expected to compete and probably win the Champions League. So uh, they took that appeal all the way to the Court of Arbitration for Sport, and ESPN has just broken this story. So let's take a look at it. It says, Man City escape Champions League ban after CAS appeal, CAS Court, Court of Arbitration for Sport. Um, so the headline here, the, the subhead, um, alleged financial fair play violations. Uh, so they are free to play in the Champions League next season. Originally, they were not going to be, again, for two seasons. And also their fine was reduced, all right? So I've already read this story, so I'm going to, uh, you know, kind of give you a little bit more detail here. Um, this is cruel as well that if City's ban was upheld, um, Manchester United is sitting in fifth right now, so they would automatically qualify for the Champions League. And uh, now they're not going to because of, uh, well, you'll see in a second. Uh, okay, so let's get straight to the statement from the Court of Arbitration for Sport. Uh, emphasize that most of the alleged breaches reported by uh, the adjudicatory chamber of the CFCB were either not established or time barred. So the CFCB is where uh, is essentially who had filed the initial complaint about Man City violating financial fair play. So when you see that, that's what they are. That was initially the, I believe that was the governing body that actually uh, recommended that they be punished. Uh, for what they did. So uh, the CAS goes on, as the charges with respect to any dishonest concealment of equity funding were clearly more significant violations than obstructing the CFCB's investigations, it was not appropriate to impose a ban on participating in UEFA's club competitions for Man City's failure to cooperate with CFCB's investigations alone. Okay, um, for all the legal jargon in there, I'm going to give you one word to sum this up. Bullshit. All right, this is horse shit what they are saying right now. What they are saying is, as the charges with respect to any dishonest concealment of equity funding, meaning that the original charge was that not only did City violate the financial fair play, they also lied about it and, and uh, obstructed the investigation, okay? The charges were clearly more significant violations than obstructing the, the investigations, okay? So they're saying that the actual charges that City filed, or the actual what they did wrong in terms of financial fair play, that was worse than obstructing the investigation, which I assume here they're admitting that City did actually obstruct that investigation. I'm not sure. It was not. It was then, knowing that, it was not appropriate to impose a ban on participating in club competitions for their failure to cooperate with the investigations alone. So what they're saying is, because this thing that they did is worse than this other thing, but this thing, obstructing, is what they actually got the ban for. We're going to overturn the ban. But they didn't say whether they did this or not. So this is the problem. So now they go on. 
However, considering the financial resources of Man City, the importance of the cooperation of clubs and investigations conducted by the CFCB because of its limited limited investigative means, we're going to get back to that, and Man City's disregard of such principle and its obstruction of the investigations, the CAS panel found that a significant fine should be imposed on, on Man City and considered it appropriate to reduce UEFA's initial fine by two-thirds. Okay, we found that a significant fine should be imposed, so we're going to fine you less than what you were before. Okay, considering the financial resources of Man City. So what I assume this means is for them to say, well, we don't really know what Man City's finances are. We just know they're really rich, so they probably didn't violate financial fair play. That's what I take that to mean. Um, So I, I, I think that's what that is. The importance of the cooperation of clubs in investigations conducted by the CFCB because of its limited investigative means. So essentially, what the Court of Arbitration for Sport is saying is that because the CFCB does not possess the financial ability to do its own investigations, the fact that City did anything at all was proof that they must be innocent and therefore the punishment was overreaching. But... What does that have to do with anything? The CFCB was the one who figured this out in the first place. The CFCB is the one who recommended these these punishments to City in the first place. Okay? This is what CFCB stands for, by the way. The uh, Chamber of the Independent Club Financial Control Body. Um, so that's what CFCB is. And unless I'm getting the story wrong, they are the ones that recommended this punishment. But because they need help to do their investigation, and City maybe helped them, th- th- so City should get off. But this is the Court of Arbitration for Sport that's saying that. It's not the CFCB that's saying, oh, City helped us. And, and, and so, you know, because they were cooperating in the investigation, we're going to be lenient with them, which is a whole other can of worms. But no, it's, it's the CFCB that said, we're telling you that City did not cooperate in our investigation. And then the Court of Arbitration for Sport comes and says, well, no, you can't do the investigation anyway, so we're just going to alleviate the punishment for no fucking reason I can think of. I, I, don't, I don't mean to curse, but this is ridiculous. City took their case to the Court of Arbitration for Sport uh, about a month ago. Uh, they were initially handed a two-year ban from UEFA and a $30 million fine um, issued to them by the CFCB. So it's kind of the CFCB fined them, and then I believe they recommended this ban, which UEFA upheld, and UEFA actually gave them that Champions League ban. Um, I do not care about anything that City says, obviously, uh, the CFCB found that City committed serious uh, breaches of financial fair play regulations, which limit the net losses clubs can accrue over a three-year period. So essentially what that means is it does not allow you to pour a bunch of money into the club from rich owners um, because it was just a couple of years before this that Man City had been bought by some very, very wealthy owners. And you're not allowed to just start pumping money into the club to start buying players Right, so that's what financial fair play is designed to alleviate. Now, several teams have already gotten off on this, but to me, Man City was the clearest, the clearest uh, example of a team that has actually violated financial fair play. Okay, so this I've always been passionate about this, that City should be punished for this, because to me, it's clear that they violated it. Uh, the club overstated its sponsorship revenue in its accounts and in the break-even information submitted to UEFA between 2012 and 2016. So, in layman's terms, this is a bit blunt. In layman's terms, they lied about how much sponsorship re- revenue they were getting. They were getting money from other sources that, that weren't their sponsors, which is illegal under this financial fair play law. So, City says the process is flawed. I don't care what City says. Um, I don't care what Pep Guardiola says. You get down to UEFA. Now, here's the thing about UEFA, okay? They are supposed to be the governing body for this, right? So they are the ones that ultimately handed that ban down to City for two years. But think about from UEFA's perspective, they're thinking about this saying, Man City is a Premier League team, and they're a highly successful Premier League team with some of the best players in the world. The Premier League is 
the most watched league in the United States, which for UEFA is going to be their target, right, for, for a market to expand into. Do you really think that UEFA would not want Man City in the Champions League? Okay, from a financial perspective, I'm going to prove this to you that UEFA does, they, they don't really care about this, okay? UEFA takes note of the decision taken by the CAS to reduce the sanctions from all that stuff. UEFA notes that the CAS panel found that there was insufficient conclusive evidence to uphold all of the CFCB's conclusions in this specific case, and that many of the, le the alleged breaches were time-barred due to the five-year time period foreseen in the UEFA regulations. Over the last few years, financial fair play has played a significant role in protecting clubs and helping them become financially sustainable, and UEFA and ECA remain committed to its, pr to its principles. Has financial fair play played a significant role in protecting clubs? Hmm. Well, how about we ask clubs like Norwich City in England? How about we ask the clubs that get promoted in France? How about we ask a club like Monaco, who from their own from their own coaching and academy raise the man who is going to be the best player on earth being Kylian Mbappe, and then PSG just waltzes in and buys him in the same year that they bought Neymar, which was not even close to being legal, and the and UEFA was just like, yeah, okay, it's fine. I mean, it's a, it's a loan for one year, and then they'll buy him next year. I mean, what's the, what's the difference, really, okay? You really think that financial fair play has played a significant role in protecting clubs and helping them become financially sustainable? I mean, that is bullshit, UEFA. And, that, I mean, this is what I'm saying. UEFA, from UEFA's perspective... There is a monetary incentive to make sure that teams like Man City, like PSG, continue to compete in Europe because they're big brands. They have great players. You want to see them in the Champions League. There's an incentive to do that. It's a short-sighted incentive, and I'm going to explain why in one second, but it's an incentive nonetheless for UEFA. So handing down that ban, knowing that it would then be kicked to the court of arbitration for sport, and the fact that this five, where was the five-year thing? Five-year time period foreseen in the UEFA regulations. UEFA's own regulations stipulate this five-year statute of limitations. So they handed down the ban knowing that CAS would have to recognize this five-year statute of limitations. So why hand down the ban? What was the point of this? This is sickening to see this. Look, I am not a legal expert, and it's possible that my interpretation of this is completely wrong. But from what I'm seeing right now, CAS has not said that City didn't, that they didn't commit a violation, okay? And in their initial argument, it mentions nothing about this statute of limitations. It just says, hey, City did this, concealment of equity funding and that was worse than obstructing the cfcb's investigation which we found they didn't actually do so therefore we're just not gonna uphold this ban because the ban isn't for the thing that the cfcb said it was even though city actually did the thing that financial fair play is designed to pre prevent you from doing they never said that city didn't do this and if you just look at the amount of money that city has been spending over the last couple years I mean, this, for those of us who are fans, right, for those of us who want to actually see competition, you need to be able to spread out the money, okay? There's more money in soccer than there's ever been, which is good because you get a lot more training, you get a lot more investment in youth, you get nicer stadiums, you, you get nicer broadcasts, like there's a lot more money in the game right now, which is great. The problem is, is that the money in the game is going to the same places, the money is going to Man City. The money is going to Real Madrid. The money is going to PSG, all right? That is where the money is going. And financial fair play is designed to stop that from happening, okay? And what CAS has basically just said is, we don't give a damn whether it happens or not. Because whether you did it or not, there's going to be some legal jargon that we're going to use to make sure that you're not going to get punished for it. This is very reminiscent of what happened to PSG, where it was some kind of legal technicality, and that's how they got off. Or AC Milan. I don't even know what happened to AC Milan, because it seemed imminently obvious, like Man City, that AC Milan violated this rule, and they got off too. So it's... As fans... 
What are we supposed to do when all we want, all we want is equitable distribution of money? Equal opportunities for the teams, okay? If Man City has the same amount of money as, as uh, I don't know, as Bournemouth, okay? And Man City wins the Premier League on 100 points and Bournemouth gets relegated because Man City has better coaching and a better academy and they just have better players because of that and they made better financial decisions, then great, that's what I want to see. I don't care if that happens. It's like the New England Patriots winning the Super Bowl over and over and over again. It's not because they got a financial advantage from the NFL. It's just because they're better at team building than everyone else, okay? I'm not saying I like the Patriots, but you got to call a spade a spade. But Man City is not better at team building than anyone else. They're better at spending money than anyone else and apparently they're better at arguing this legal minutia with the court of arbitration for sport it, this it, it really it, it disgusts me right now that there is no recourse for us as soccer fans as football fans this is discouraging um it's really late and i'm rambling i understand that this is going to be a little bit longer of a video than i intended uh, but I just, I had to get my feelings out there about this because this is a serious problem. I don't, at this point, I don't know what you have to do. I'm going to end with uh, the only thing that I think could actually stop this. Uh, because I've explained to you that UEFA has a monetary incentive to make sure that this doesn't happen. And... Uh, the Court of Arbitration for Sport has an incentive to make sure that UEFA is happy, which is not the way it should be, but unfortunately, I think that's what we're dealing with right now. So to me, I think the only way to actually affect some change in this particular area when it comes to financial fair play, things like this, is you have to let the countries, the football associations from the different countries, you, they have to be the ones to make these rules. They are the only ones that are going to be incentivized to make sure that teams are following the rules and that it doesn't get to the point where where Bayern Munich has won eight Bundesligas in a row just because they have so much more money than everybody. The Bundesliga would have an incentive to make sure that doesn't happen because people like me stop watching the Bundesliga as much as I love watching it. There's no fucking point anymore because Bayern Munich just outspends everybody. Right, so the Bundesliga would have an incentive to make sure that that doesn't happen. UEFA doesn't care because what they care about is that Bayern Munich comes to the Champions League. What they care about is that is that Bayern Munich buys all of the best German players so that they are constantly on national TV because Bayern Munich games are always televised. So they're constantly on national TV and then they go to their national team and then they represent their national team at, what else, the UEFA Euros. So UEFA, UEFA actually has an incentive to make sure that only the top few teams are the ones that are being recognized. So we can't trust UEFA to be making these regulations because they won't do it. They don't care. They'd rather that Man City can continue to get away with this stuff. It doesn't matter to them, okay? I'm not saying they're bad people at UEFA. I'm just saying from a monetary perspective that is their incentive the leagues have an incentive to make sure that they are competitive and that they are interesting in the interest of sport right we see it in the u.s with things like salary cap and it can go the other direction poorly we see it in the mls but the idea of competition of sport that the leagues have an incentive to do that the countries themselves have an incentive to do that not uefa so that's what we need to see Financial fair play or whatever it is that, that the different football associations will call it, it has to be organized by the associations themselves. That's the only way that we are going to see change for this. I'm sorry to say, but I, I, I'm i discouraged. Uh, I'm discouraged by this, and I'm angry. So uh, apologize for yelling at you for about 20 minutes here. And uh, apologies for the longer video. If you made it through all of this, uh, we really appreciate. Let's uh, let's discuss in the comments. Let me know whatever you're thinking about this. And hey, if you're much smarter than me, tell me uh, what it was that I got wrong about this. Maybe I'm completely misreading this this whole story. Uh, I'm definitely open to that possibility. So please let me know uh, if it turns out I am. And uh, and I'm always willing to change my mind about things. So. Uh, uh, for all of you commenting right now, I really appreciate it. We'll discuss. Subscribe for all of our future videos, soccer and otherwise. We appreciate you.